There's a lot of ways to apply a chemical onto a surface to be cleaned. This video is going to show the methods that I've used to apply chemicals at low pressure. So low pressure meaning I'm going to talk about power washers elsewhere. Another video, this is just low pressure. I remember for the first deck I cleaned, I actually used a watering can to apply my cleaning chemical. I mixed, uh, mixed my cleaning solution in a five gallon bucket, then I transferred it to the watering can, then I carried the can over to the deck and applied it liberally. It actually did great on the decking itself. It was pretty messy on vertical surfaces and railings and balusters, but the point being, it got the job done and I could afford it. After the watering can, I graduated to a pump sprayer. Every hardware store in the world carries some version of these. I learned to never, never use a backpack sprayer because when it would leak, and it would always leak, it would, the cleaning solution would dribble down my back and that sometimes really sucked. So I found this particular two gallon pump sprayer to be ideal for what I do. Um, as, as before, I, I mix my cleaning solution in a five gallon bucket, then transfer it to the pump sprayer, give it a few pumps, I'm off and running. Uh, the pros of this pump are at $14 from my local hardware store. These are super affordable, even disposable. Um, it's small, it's portable, it's superb for detailed spraying. So if I'm spraying around bushes or delicate, fancy things, if I'm being really careful where I'm getting the spray, this is perfect. The cons of this are obviously it's a limited volume. Uh, minuscule flow rate and even uh, even the though there's a, like a little strainer in the pickup tube sometimes it'll have trouble if there's any graininess in the cleaning solution it can clog up need cleaning so then I bought this setup from wash safe uh, this is a cheap Chinese gas powered trash pump basically it uh, draws solution from a 30 gallon trash bucket um, the pros of this are pretty good flow rate, certainly better volume in the 30 gallon uh, bucket than what I had been using in the pump sprayer and watering can. Um, you know, fairly inexpensive setup. I don't remember. I think it was a couple hundred bucks. Uh, the cons of this system for me were, first of all, that it was sort of always on. So in other words, as soon as I started that gas pump, I couldn't let it sit there indefinitely without spraying. Um, so I was always kind of like running from the, the, running from spraying to go turn off the gas pump, to move my setup and then start the gas pump and then run around and spray. Had a hard time with that. Found the system kind of cumbersome. Certainly uh, no good for stronger corrosives, so uh, sodium hypo solutions or sodium hydroxide, not the pump for that. Uh, and the pump itself, it, it was irreparable if anything went, or went wrong. After that, uh, I switched to this 12 volt pump, sometimes called a electric diaphragm pump, seven gallons a minute. Uh, it was made with some chemical resistance built in. This is kind of the type of pump and spray setup that most of us smaller uh, owner operators will be using. Um, you know, folks out of a trailer or a pickup. The pros are at a decent flow rate. I think it was seven gallons a minute. Super quiet. Uh, the pressure was slightly adjustable, though not real easily. Use an Allen wrench on this little screw here um, you know being electric some customers perceived that the process was more eco-friendly so I just I didn't argue with them on that um, cons are you know obviously this requires a big battery so it had a truck battery actually I ended up with two batteries I, f I found that two batteries were necessary I could use it for a couple days of work and then I'd have to recharge it overnight um, Obviously, this type of pump requires some sort of chemical storage tank to draw from or a, or a bucket to draw from. Uh, if it's a tank, it can take you know, space and be quite heavy. 
This is an on or off pump. Again, it can't be throttled. If I tried to throttle it, it would overheat. It would also overheat from starting and stopping too regularly or too quickly. So it really just wants to be turned on and let run for a couple minutes and then turned off for a few minutes and then let run for a few more minutes. Um, overheating really reduces its lifespan. And like I, I tried like hell to baby this thing, you know, guarding against overheating and, and flushing after every use. And I still, I got to the point where I was going through like three of these a season. <laughs> Um, following that, I got this 110 volt booster pump. Uh, this happens to be a three quarter horsepower pump from Dayton. Dayton is, is the manufacturer. I got this through Granger. There's a lot of different ones out there. This is just what I got. Um, the pros of this are ooh, fantastic flow rate, super quiet, actually pretty throttleable. The major con with this type of pump, and I mean major, is that it requires real electricity. I'm not going to run this off a truck battery. I need a 110 volt, 10 amp circuit. So I've either got to run it from an onboard generator, which is expensive and noisy and heavy and takes up space, or I got to run it through an outlet at the property that I'm cleaning. And remember, I'm I'm washing things, so the area might be wet. So, you know, between electricity and water, safety is an immediate uh, issue. For that reason, uh, when running from a 110 volt outlet, I'll use a GFCI ground, uh, ground fault circuit interrupter extension cord. I got this cord through Amazon. It's got a, uh, a reset right by the outlet so that if the, if the circuit trips, it trips right by the outlet and not all the way back by my pump. I've never had trouble with this, never had any problems, although I'm always super careful to keep the whole works as dry as possible. So yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll move, I'll move the cord to other outlets away from where I'm actively, actively cleaning. Sometimes I'll, I'll plug into an outlet in the customer's garage and then I'll shut the garage car door on the cord, which is, you know, stretched out down the driveway. Uh, that seems to be a good way to do it, but obviously there I need I need access to the garage, which I don't always have. So again, this booster, fabulous pump for what it does, but requires some forethought and planning. Which brings me to this industry-specific air diaphragm pump. Air diaphragm pumps, uh, they basically use compressed air to drive a diaphragm and the whole thing beats like a heart and kind of sounds like a locomotive. I currently use a pump made by Allflow. Uh, this has a non-metallic body. It's got chemical resistant insides, chemical resistant diaphragm. This is a industrial duty, industry specific pump. Uh, the pros are bulletproof longevity. I, you know, I'm on I haven't touched mine after a few seasons of use. I haven't even literally haven't even touched it. Uh, for, for maintenance or repair. Uh, it's got good flow rate, um, good pressure. It's throttleable, so I can run it at high volume, low volume, high pressure, low pressure. It doesn't care. It'll just keep pumping. The cons are eh, a little expensive. It's not terribly quiet as it's, you know, as it's beating. Um, it requires a major air compressor to operate it. Um, so think this, not this. So the air compressor to run that pump is itself expensive, not quiet. It is heavy and it certainly takes up space. So a lot of cons to that type of pump, but the, the pros of flow rate, uh, spray distance, longevity, and throttle ability to me make it ideal for what I do. I use that pump for probably uh, more than 80% of my chemical application.